This package came all the way from Lithuania and it is pretty beat up. Not a whole lot of packaging. I'm not sure what to think about this. This video is sponsored by iFixit. More on them in a minute. The seller of this PS4, Lucas, said he originally took it to a repair shop for cleaning and the repair shop tore off the connector for the power supply. That repair shop then took it to several other repair shops to see if any of them could fix it, and none of them could. So I'm not really sure what I'm getting into here. So immediately the first thing I noticed is it wasn't put together correctly. These cables all are underneath this metal shield. They need to be on top of the metal shield. There's something going on over here. I don't know what, there should be a screw down in there. I don't know why there's not one. So already I'm a little worried about this one. Okay, and under this power supply is where the problem supposedly is. So we have the power supply connector. That all looks fine. <laughs> yeah, I see where the problem is. So this right here is what the other repair shops couldn't fix. That connector is just like totally destroyed. Looks like the motherboard has plenty of problems too. I gotta get this thing fully disassembled so we can get this motherboard out and have a closer look at the damage on the board. And let's see what we find under the metal shield <laughs> after I get this last screw out. Now let's see what we find under the metal shield. Okay, nothing interesting there. Uh, we're already, we're missing some uh, memory chip pads. Got a lot of issues down here, a bunch of extra solder. So you can't really tell on camera probably, but when I push on this, it kind of, it pops back up. This should fit nice and flat against the heat sink on the bottom here. So something's going on down here too. Okay, let's see what's under the motherboard. Okay, I don't really see, we got a ton of solder over here, but other than that, I don't really see anything that should be causing it to kind of pop up like that. Oh yeah, somebody removed this metal plate and they didn't put it back together correctly. These screws right here need to go through this metal plate. There's a hole there that a screw goes through and a hole there. Uh, those might be the only two. And obviously, for sure, not the perfect amount of thermal paste. I mean, the sort of good news is I don't think they messed up anything with the disk drive. It looks like a lot of other pieces of this PS4 they messed up, but the disk drive so far looks okay. And now with these two screws removed, we can put this plate back in. Now that sits on there how it should. Now I need to install these four screws, and then we'll get the repair done and obviously take care of this thermal paste. Now the motherboard sits on there just like it should. Once we get this clamped down, it's gonna be nice and flush, just how it should be. Now let's take a look at this power supply connector and see if we can fix it. But first, I'm gonna remove a bunch of this solder from the back side, then we'll get to the front side. It also looks like we're missing a couple of components over here. So we'll also take a look at that. So I've got the board flipped over because the first thing we need to do is remove all of this excess solder. There's just huge puddles of it. And then while I'm at it, I'll also install these two capacitors that go right here. I'm gonna first put a bunch of flux right over these puddles of solder that have solidified, and then I'm gonna bring in my solder wick and wick up a bunch of this excess solder. So we've got the board about as clean as we're gonna be able to get it. I also was able to clean up this connector. I would like to just put a new connector on here. The problem is these just aren't available anywhere. So at least not that I know of. So I think I can repurpose this one. It's not in the best shape and it's got a broken outside here, but it definitely will still work as long as I can get a nice solid connection to the board over here. So this is just another motherboard that I have laying around for, I believe the same model of PS4, are very similar. These green strips right here are pieces of copper that have a solder mask on them. That's why they look green. But this shows us where each connector from the power supply connector should go. Basically, we just need to connect each of the pads on the connector, which will attach right here, to where that connector pin will go on the board. Since these traces on the board are torn off, we need to run a wire from here back to here, here back to here, 
here back to this little spot right here and here back to this little spot right here. Once that's done, we can solder the legs of the connector right onto the board. And then we need to try and get a nice solid connection on these two pins on the board because these are the mounting pins for the connector. So let's get under the microscope and have a look at this area of the board and see if we have enough left of each of these traces to connect a wire to. My absolute favorite precision tool kits are from iFixit. And these two kits right here are my favorite of the favorite. The iFixit Protect Tool Kit. This has almost any bit you need to get almost anything apart. Then it also has a bunch of pry tools over here and these little triangles, which are great for removing things like iPhone screens and other things that are glued down. And then we also have some more pry tools over here, along with a suction cup and an ESD strap. This is kind of my go-to kit when I have something new to take apart, just because it's got so many different things that I need for prying, and then of course, all the bits and drivers. Now, if I need to get a little more torque on something to get off a difficult bolt or screw. This is the iFixit Manta driver kit. And what I love about this is it has the smaller driver, but it also has this huge driver right here. This is great for getting off really hard bolts and nuts. And I use it all the time when I have something that I just can't get off with the normal smaller driver. This also has an expanded selection of bits so you can take apart even more things. So if you're looking for some of the best precision tools out there, I highly recommend iFixit. And for Black Friday, they got some great deals going on. Go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix to check them out. I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. So I can barely see what's left of this pin on the board and this pin on the board. So this little via right here needs to connect to this connector. This little via right here needs to connect to this trace on the board. Then we'll run another wire from here up here and another wire from here to here. After that, we will try and repair these mounting pins right here. I'm gonna put a thin piece of copper down in here and then attach it to what's left of the board here. And then the same thing over here, and that'll give us something to mount the connector down to. So I'm gonna be using some tiny enameled wire to run these traces. And in order to connect the wire to the pin on the connector, I will need to burn off that enamel, and then I can just solder it directly to the connector. So now that I have those circuit traces installed and repaired, I'm going to put on some solder mask. It's a liquid, and I'm gonna spread the liquid around on the new circuit traces, and then I'll use a UV light to cure the new solder mask, and that will produce a hardened solder mask to protect these circuit traces. Once that's all done, I can install the actual power supply connector, and then we should be able to test it. And the connector is now soldered on. It definitely doesn't look pretty, but it looks a lot better than when I started. I wish I could have gotten a little better connection over here, but it's definitely better than it was, and it should be good enough to make it work. So now let's get this thing put back together and see if it's gonna turn on. I think we all know it's gonna work just fine, since now we have a perfect amount of thermal paste. And will the power supply connect? Let's find out. Come on. Oh, I think that's it. Okay, connected just fine. Now we've got this PS4 Pro all fixed up, but will it turn on? I've got it all plugged in and it hasn't exploded yet, so that's good news. Let's start by seeing if the disk drive has power. Oh, it does, that is great news. Okay, well, let's try the power button and see what happens. Good so far, I hear the fan going. We got a blue light. Nothing on the screen yet. Come on. Still got a blue light. I hope this isn't a blue light of death after all that. It actually wouldn't surprise me considering the fact this came all the way from Lithuania and it didn't have that much padding in the box, but I'm still hopeful. I hope it'll go to a white light. Come on. Oh. And all we have is a flashing blue light after all of that. So unfortunately, this PS4 has a blue light of death, but the good news is that we did fix what we set out to fix, and that was the power supply connector. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix a PS5 that Sony couldn't even fix. 
I'll put a link for that right up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Wait, we also have new merch. This is one of the designs we have, but you can also see the rest right down on the merch store under any of my videos. They can make a great gift for the fixer in your life, so be sure to check them out. And now the video's over.